Welcome back to power outages and your power outage supply kits, things that you may need in those type of kits. Now, in the previous video that we just did, we covered a lot of things in that video. It was very long. I do apologize for that, but I did want to cover everything that I possibly could for all of you folks out there. Now, to go along with the whole power outage type scenario, today's video is going to be on different ways and different things that you may want to need or you may want to pick up so that you can cook. Because let's face it, okay, if there is a, a power outage if, due to a natural disaster or even just storms of any type, either it be ice storms, snow storms, severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, anything like that, all that applies to this power outage supply kit. Now, remember one thing. When you are cooking, you have to be very, very careful. There are some of these that you can use in your house, which would be fine to do, and other ones you cannot use in your house. You have to use them outside in a well-ventilated area. I want to make sure that I stress that so everybody understands. Now, we're going to talk about maybe some different uses of different things that you may have around your home that you maybe can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right off and get into some of these stoves. The first one that we're going to start with is the lovely gas one. All right. Now you can pick these up. Sometimes you can find them on sale on Amazon. As you can see, they set up really quick. Your gas cylinder goes right into here. Now, your gas one does use butane, all right? So you have to have these butane cylinders. Now, there is an adapter that you can buy for a different type of um, things that use the butane and all that kind of stuff so that you can run it on propane. So it may be something you wanna look into because sometimes the butane fuels, they don't last as long as the propane and uh, you have to buy quite a few of them. You can get them in these uh, four packs. I did get these online through Amazon. I don't remember quite what the price was, but you, as you can see, you have a very, very large cooking area. So if you wanted to set a pot or something on there, you can set a pot right on there. It's pretty big and you could cook just about anything that you're looking to do. You could boil water, you could cook a meal, you could make pasta, whatever else, fry up some chicken, steak, potatoes, eggs, whatever. You could cook it all right on this one little burner. I like it because it's a nice big burner. Everything is solid metal on this thing. And when you want to put it away, you just take it and fold that up. That slides back in. The gas one is done. It goes right back into the container it came in like so and you are good to go it has these it's a nice real hard solid plastic case right on the very front right here there's two locking mechanisms you just take and just once you snap it like that snap it like that you're good to go all right compact nice lightweight the gas one is a really good way to go. You just have to make sure that you do have the butane unless you are going to buy the adapter. Moving on down the line. <clears throat> the lovely Coleman stove. Now, anybody that probably grew up camping or something, probably more than likely their parents had a Coleman stove. More likely they also did have the old style gas. All right, now you do get a large surface area you can fit two frying pans on here not the you know the big large ones but you can put 12 inch frying pans on here you can boil water on one side and you can also take and on the other side be using a frying pan and cooking and everything else all you do is attach this little adapter here to the side now a great thing about this stove and what i want to really want to go over with you you can buy an oven that goes on this stove. It'll set right on here and then you could bake anything you want to bake. So say it was a power outage situation and your power is going to be out for a few days. Your kids are driving you nuts and everything else. 
you want to make them some chocolate chip cookies. Well, this is a great way that you could do it. You could do this. You can use this Coleman stove in your home with propane. I mean, a lot of people have propane stoves. Uh, if they don't have natural gas, they use propane. So if you didn't feel too comfortable, put it by a window, open a window, you'll be just fine. If it's nice out after the storm or anything, if you wanted to cook outside, you can also do that. They're very, they're portable. You can cook anywhere you want to go. Put it on a tailgate. If you're going on a picnic, I mean, these things that you can use a lot of this stuff for recreation use on top of your emergency preparedness. Your power outage supply kit covers a lot of different things that you do on a daily basis with you and your family. So this way here, you have some way to cook compact. It does have, <clears throat> when I bought mine years ago, it did come with the carrying case. Both sides have a place to store the one pound cylinders. All right. Now you can buy these one pound cylinders in Walmart. They're probably running now. They're running about 10 bucks or so for a two pack. Um, they used to be really cheap. So what I would suggest for most people, if you want to have a nice emergency backup is you want to go out and you want to pick yourself up one of these. And this here is your standard hose, all right? This runs from, let me put this down. Now my Coleman stove is probably 25, 30 years old. Uh, if you actually look in the inside when it says where it was made, it was made in America before they started outsourcing it to China. So, <clears throat> You take your propane tank here. Your 20 pound propane tank. Now a lot of people, you already have these because you have a gas grill outside. Most people have a gas grill. Um, and they use the, the 20 pound propane tank. You buy this adapter, you connect this, just like you would if you're gonna connect anything else. This one does have the gauge and it tells you how full your tank is. Then you attach this end to your inner piece that attaches to your stove. Now, you can use this with a lot of different products that I'm gonna tell you here in a minute. But, <clears throat> here is the thing. 20 pounds of fuel is gonna last you for quite a long time compared to buying the one pound tank. So if you already have a tank and you make sure it's full, I keep four of these on hand. I don't know if you might be able to see them behind me on the floor over there, but I keep four of these on hand just for emergency situations. I mean, I also have a big griddle over there. This way here, you know, you could be self-sustainable in your cooking for a very long time. Using your propane stove, <clears throat> along as with your adapter here, and you can get out of purchasing and buying all these small propane little cylinders. Now these are great to travel with. All right. So say you were going to go out for the day and you want to use it for recreation or whatever else you use these, you know, emergency situation, you take it off your gas grill, throw it on your Coleman stove and you're good to go. Now, where to buy your Coleman stove? Do not buy it from Amazon folks. On Amazon, the classic Coleman stove, they're selling for 60, 60 some odd bucks. Go to walmart.com. You can buy the classic Coleman stove for $48.97. So you're going to save yourself some money. Because as I say, Amazon isn't always the cheapest. Now, sticking with stoves, we're going to move right over here to the Camp Chef. I've done videos on this. I did a review. I also used this and I took and cooked a whole meal and everything else like it was an emergency type situation. I use the adapter, run it off a 20 pound tank, hooked it right up. On the top, you have two huge large burners, which are twice the size of the Coleman stove. You can boil water in this bad boy in a matter of no time. You do have your oven. You can fit a nine by 13 dish in here. I think that's a very, very, very good thing, you know? Uh, I cooked the whole meal, put it in here, go back and watch one of my cooking videos. You'll see that I, it's right in here. You know, you have your really nice dials. Everything is solid metal and everything else. Um, these are the two dials that run your burners. That's for your oven. 
have a temperature control, you have a gauge and everything else. So this would be the top of the line. This is what most people can afford. All right. Now I did, you know, I took it, I saved up my money because this is what I wanted. Now I did buy this on Cabela's because they had them on sale and I saved myself $75 because of their sale compared to buying it on Amazon. It has these really good, sturdy, huge handles, metal handles, and it came with the case. So it has a traveling case. You pop it right in there. You can just pick it right up and carry it right along with no problems, no issues. Now, moving on down the line, your small portable little gas grill. These come in handy. You can pick these bad boys up. You can get them at Walmart, usually around 20 bucks or so and everything else. And you can cook a lot of food on here. You can also, this is your adapter that you hook to the side right here. Use your propane, your 20 pound tank. That line will connect right to here. And now you can cook and cook and cook. So you have multiple ways of cooking, you know, using gas, okay? But there's other ways that you can do this too, all right? Now, we're gonna move right on down the line. And it's very compact. So it's another thing that you could take for recreational you know, so you're getting more uses out of a lot of these products than just letting them set around folks, get out and use them and get familiar with them. You know, you go on a picnic, you want to barbecue up some burgers and dogs, maybe some chicken, you want to cook up some coffee, you know, on one of your stoves and things of this nature. You can use on your stoves and everything, your pots and pans right from your house. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just gas. It's no different than if you're cooking at home. Okay? Now, last one on the list here. Now, I haven't even used this thing yet. It's a little portable charcoal grill. Little dinky thing. And why did I buy this? Because Walmart had them clearanced last year. And the clearance rack, when they were setting up all their fine Christmas stuff coming uh, to a neighborhood soon to you, you and they had them clearance for five ninety seven. How can you go wrong, folks? Now I always keep charcoal. I have three and a half bags of charcoal. I like the Kingsford. You can use whatever you want. I buy that also when it is on sale at Walmart. Now there's several different things that you can do with your charcoal grill. All right, there's several different ways that you can cook with your charcoal grill. So. We all know how charcoal grill works. You take this little thing off, you adjust the little flutes in the bottom, you make sure you have your little tray right here, and you dump your charcoal in here, and you get it going. Now you may have to use, you may want to use a flute if you don't like the lighter fluid flavor. All right, so I don't particularly like using the lighter fluid, so I use a flute, get a fire going in here, get my coals hot in here, then I dump them into there. Now, what you could do is, another option that you could have besides charcoal, if you do have smaller pieces of wood or anything like that, you can build a small fire in here, then you let it burn down just like with your charcoal so you have the hot coals. Put your grill top back on, all right? And you can cook with wood. You can buy wood blocks. They have small wood blocks that you can buy at several different outlets and several different stores that you could put in here. And this way here, you have another way of cooking besides of charcoal. Now, with also with your grill, what I want to talk about. Now, your, your larger grills, like this is just a small, nice little compact little grill. All right, but your larger grills, <clears throat> your cooking surface is a lot larger. So this ring will be a lot bigger. Now, here you go. Here's a good tip. If you have a fire pit, say you don't have a charcoal grill. Maybe you don't want one. Maybe you don't have room for one. All right. Go to this. If you have a fire ring, fire pit, all right, and then, you know, it's rounded all the way around, you know, those standard ones that you can buy and put up right up in your backyard, whatever else. If you have one of those, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Walmart may have them. Um, you can probably get them online, but you can buy these replacement grates. All right. This is your cooking surface. Now, 
What you do is you buy the largest one you can so you can set it down inside your fire pit. Here's a great tip because then you could use your charcoal. Even though you don't have a charcoal grill, you could use charcoal. You could also use wood and everything else. You just have to let it, you know, simmer down a little bit. You don't want to be, you know, cooking right over the open flame because then you're probably going to be burning things and everything else. It's no difference than when, if you're using a charcoal grill, let the coals get hot and then, you know, simmer down some and everything else. Put this right down in on top of there. And now you have this large surface that you could cook on. You could put a pot of boiling water on one side. You'd be cooking chicken or burgers or dogs or whatever else because just because it's an emergency situation and maybe some of the stuff in your freezer is starting to go if you don't have a generator you know you just start cooking the food you can feed your neighbors you can do all different types of stuff but it's just another option for you out there of something that you can do so that you can cook if you don't have a charcoal grill or maybe a gas grill. Now, one of the bonuses to some of these things that I really want to, you know, reiterate here is, if you notice, a lot of these things are small, except for this one here. A lot of this stuff is small, takes up little to no room. You can use these things for your recreational purposes and go out and enjoy them. You don't have to just buy them and put them in a closet, put them in the garage, and you never use them unless there's an emergency. Use these things, take them out. You know, if you have your Coleman stove right here, you could go out, you can have, make yourself some coffee, breakfast, something like that. You know, if you're going camping, if you're going, say, on a picnic to a park for a day and everything else, you can take one of these right here. You can do some burgers, dogs, chicken, steaks, whatever else, some kebabs. You know, I mean, you just got to get creative. And this way, when... You have an emergency and you have to get these out to use them for the emergency. You've already used it and you've got some good ideas of what you can do. And you know how to use it. You know when to put the meat and stuff on and you know how hot it's got to be and so on and so forth. So you understand your products, which is very important, folks. Understanding how to use your products before the emergency is key to survival. So, you know, a lot of these things are relatively cheap, except for this thing right here. The gas one, like I said, it's probably going to run you between 60 and 80 bucks. I really didn't check on the price. I'm sure everything is going up because of inflation. Um, but as we come closer to winter, make sure you're always checking Walmart at the end of the year when they start putting out their Christmas stuff because they discontinue everything for summer. Grills, everything. All right. They just, they want it gone because they want to put out all the fun Christmas paper and decorations. And that's when you can score some serious, serious deals at Walmart. So you have to really pay attention when they start putting up all those Christmas items. Now, something else I want to cover real quick. We have talked about these right here, these small little things. You can pick a two pack up. Like I said, you know, these things are probably going to run you between 10 and 12 bucks for a two pack because the prices have gone way up. That's why I suggest make sure, sure you have the adapters. So in an emergency situation, you can use your 20 pound tank. And if you wanna have these on hand, if you're gonna go out on a picnic for an outing or anything like that, you know, you take those with you so you don't have to drag that big old tank with you. Now, if you're gonna go camping for five or seven days or something, by all means, take that sucker with you because you won't have to worry about fuel for the whole trip. You know, make sure that you're getting butane if you have something that runs on butane and everything else. Walmart does sell it. I don't know how much it is and everything else. Um, I did order a four pack right off of Amazon. It was just so much easier. <clears throat> Something else I want to cover real quick. You may have sternos. Sternos are a great thing that you have. You can buy those online at Amazon. You can pick them up in Walmart. You can pick them up. Um, I've even seen them in Home Depot and Lowe's. So having sternos is a great thing. Now, when you're buying these, you can get the liquid type or the gel type. Now I get both of these at Walmart. Now the li liquid one here is $2.97 and the gel one is $4.97 because the gel lasts longer than the liquid does. So, but this is just another option for you to have in your arsenal. This way here, you have some way to cook 
reheat something. If you're opening up canned goods, you just want to heat it up for your kids or something. If it's beefaronis or raviolis or chili, something like that, you know, a sterno would be a great little way to do this. And with no, no issues. We're almost right down to the very end here. And something that you need to have in case you need to use any of these products. Uh, this one here does have an igniter on it and it lights automatically. If not, you got to make sure that you got matches. Now you can pick up these boxes of matches at Walmart. I think they're like $1.88 or they may have raised the prices. I haven't bought any in quite a while because I have like 20 packs of these things. But you can, if you want, you can use wax, uh, like a clear wax, melt it down. You can dip the ends in them and you're making your own waterproof matches. Bic lighters. You can pick these up at any place that you go. If you go to 7-Eleven, you can pick up Bic lighters. If you go to the liquor store, you can pick up lighters. If you go to Walmart, you can pick up lighters. If you go to the grocery store, you can pick up lighters. If you go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, anything, anywhere, you can pick up Bic lighters. Bic lighters are a lifesaver. They will light in any conditions and everything else. And I swear by these things. Make sure you always have Bic lighters. Prices are going up on these bad boys. I think a four pack I just bought the other day, it was like $7.97 or $8.97 at Walmart. Um, they used to be like $5.97. So the prices are definitely going up. Now, if you don't want to get your hands too close to any flame or anything else, and you are a little bit lurry, if you're just learning how to use some of these products and everything else, I would suggest that you pick yourself up a utility lighter. This way your hands are back farther and everything else. So when it does that little poof, you don't freak out, you know? Um, so this way here, you can keep your hands and everything back from the flame and the gas and light it and feel secure. Pick up a utility lighter. It doesn't have to be some high brand name or anything else. Go to Walmart, pick them up. They used to have those big bins back there, back towards the lawn and garden and they're 97 cents a piece. So pick some up, doesn't hurt. Last thing we're gonna talk about is, and probably one of the most important things when you're dealing with any type of heat, fire, anything like that, make sure that you do have yourself some good, sturdy, leather type gloves or fireproof gloves, whatever you wanna spend your money on, but make sure, don't get the cotton gloves because th that's not gonna protect you. It's just gonna to melt to your fingers if you touch something hot, an open flame or something like that. Get some of these gloves that you can see these things have been well through hell and back and uh, uh, they still work just fine. Uh, I've had these things for quite a while and that's why the way they look the way they do. You probably can pick those up at any hardware store, any store that you probably really go to for, you know, 10, 12 bucks, but they're going to save these. That's very important in any situation, whether it be recreational emergency, or everyday use because you just don't want something to happen to these especially if it's an emergency situation because guess what folks that ain't going to be a good thing so my name is Charles and this has been survival preparedness for beginners and we've been doing power outage supply kits and things that you need we had the big video come out the other day on all different types of other things Today is all on cooking and everything else. And we're going to have one more video coming out, power outage supply kits. And that one there is going to be more of a informational video and things to do, things not to do. And when you don't have power and you're looking to try to set things up, you want to play it smart if you get what I'm saying. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching all my videos. If you would, please share this with all your friends, your family, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, whatever it is. Get the word out there, folks. Let's grow this community. If you really like the video, please do me a favor and hit that uh, thumbs up button. And if you're new here, please subscribe to this channel. You'll find that there are a lot of videos in here to help you out just about in any type of a situation and everything else. It is a great community. You, a lot of people chime in and give a lot of good advice and help people out and give them the ideas that they need to survive any, and I mean any, thing that comes our way. Because as the community keeps growing, 
as long as we all stick together, which nowadays is very important, we'll survive any storm. So until next time, folks, thank you again for joining me. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Catch all of you on the flip side.